right guys now we shall be discussing the arterial supply of your upper limb now in the arterial supply of your upper limb we shall be mainly focusing on the subclavian artery axillary artery and the brachial artery as well as all the anastomoses we shall be discussing okay so first of all all of you should know the basic thing the basic thing that we have got we have got a vessel that is coming out of your left ventricle in this way now this vessel which is coming out of your left ventricle is called as an arch of iota and as it is descending down it is called as a descending iota right so this is the arch of iota and now it is descending down it is called descending iota now here we have got a few branches over here guys you have to keep it in your mind what are those branches so here we have got a trunk like this okay this is called as brachiocephalic trunk what is this trunk this trunk is called as brachiocephalic trunk now this brachiocephalic trunk will divide into two branches now one branch that is going on to the right side this is called as a subclavian artery one branch that is going up this is called as the common carotid artery one is called as a subclavian artery another one which is going up is called as a common carotid artery now this common carotid artery will in turn divide into two branches now one which is entering inside is called internal carotid right now this common carotid artery will divide into two branches now one which is going out this is called as external carotid artery one which is going inside is called as internal carotid artery okay so all of you know that this is internal carotid artery this is external carotid artery and what is this this is called as a brachiocephalic trunk brachiocephalic trunk okay and this branch over here this is called as the subclavian artery subclavian artery okay the same thing on the right hand side also you have got uh, let us say the left internal carotid artery this is called as the left internal carotid artery uh, sorry this is called as the left common carotid artery and this le left common carotid artery also will divide into left internal carotid and external carotid artery right so here we have got internal carotid artery on the left side we have got external carotid artery on the left side then what about the subclavian here we have got the left subclavian artery okay now when you look at the subclavian artery subclavian artery ends here now from here there is an artery that is continuing down this is called as an axillary artery okay so even axillary artery also will end here now axillary artery will give out will continue down as brachial artery and this brachial artery will give out two branches one is called as a radial artery another one is called as an ulnar artery okay so what are the branches over here one is subclavian artery another one is called as the axillary artery axillary artery continues as the brachial artery brachial artery divides into radial artery as well as ulnar artery ulnar artery okay radial artery as well as ulnar so this is just an overview guys overview of how the arterial supply is to your upper limb okay here we have got subclavian artery which continues as axillary artery and down here we have got brachial artery brachial artery divides into two one is called radial another one is called as ulnar artery so this is just an overview now we shall be clearly discussing about each and every branch here okay so before i discuss each and every branch the so first branch i want to start is regarding this axillary artery and then i will discuss about the subclavian artery okay so first of all let us start discussing about the axillary artery so hello guys so now we shall be discussing regarding the axillary artery now we shall be discussing axillary artery and its branches okay so before i discuss axillary artery and its branches the first few important things you need to know is that this is your sternum all the way this is your sternum and here you have got your clavicle like this s shaped bone clavicle and here you have got here you have got your first rib in this way let us say this is your first rib here right and let us also draw that this is your scapula this is the scapula and here you have got your humerus now why i am drawing this you will understand it in a minute right now all of you know that humerus has got two lines like this one is called as a lateral lip another one is called as the 
medial limb. Okay, so this is called as a lateral limb, whereas this one is called as the medial limb. Medial limb where your teres major is attached. And all of you know that just below this was a question asked. Just below the clavicle, this is called as infraclavicular fossa. In this infraclavicular fossa, I can palpate a bone here. This is called coracoid process, right? So exactly here, I have got my coracoid process. This is the coracoid process here. This is a coracoid process. Now, what is the muscle that is coming out of the coracoid process, guys? That is your pectoralis minor muscle. So, there is a muscle that is coming out of your coracoid process like this. This muscle is called as pectoralis minor muscle. And I already told you that the muscle that is coming out of your medial lip, that is your teres major. So, this is a muscle that is coming out of your medial lip. That is your teres major. Okay, so this muscle over here and this muscle over here, one is called as pectoralis minor muscle and this is called as teres major muscle that is attached to the medial lip. Okay, now this is the picture I want you to print in your mind because the same things I will be drawing again with removing of the unnecessary things. So, I will be drawing the the first rib, I will be drawing the coracoid process as well as the humerus. Okay, just pay attention. So, I am just drawing the first rib. This is the first rib over here, let us say. And here we have got the coracoid process. And here we have got the humerus. Here we have got the humerus like this. Here we have got the humerus. Okay, all of you know humerus has got two lines, one is called as a lateral lip, another one is called as a medial lip. Okay, now look here. What did I tell you? The first artery will be subclavian artery, after that it will be axillary artery, right? So let us say, and, and by the way, here we have got what? We have got a muscle here. This is your, yes, this is your pectoralis minor muscle and you have got another muscle coming out of your medial lip. This is your teres major muscle. Pectoralis minor as well as teres major. Now look here. Here we have got our subclavian artery. Now subclavian artery passes down all the way like this. And this subclavian artery passes over, over your first rib. Okay. Till the lower border of the first rib or the lateral border of the first rib. Till here. Till here this is called as your subclavian artery. Okay. Till here you call it as your subclavian artery. So let us write a note that subclavian artery subclavian artery is still the lower border of your first rib the lower border of your first rib okay now from here the axillary artery will start now first what will happen is that the axillary artery will pass below your pectoralis minor muscle this is your pectoralis minor right it passes below your pectoralis minor and after that it passes over your teres major muscle so this is your axillary artery which is passing below your pectoralis minor first and then above your teres major muscle so in this way your axillary artery is divided into three parts okay so this is called as a first part and behind the pectoralis minor you call it as a second part after that, you call it as the third part of the axillary artery. So, you have got three parts of the axillary artery. The first part is above. The first part is above the pectoralis minor muscle. The second part is behind the pectoralis minor. And the third part is after the pectoralis minor. So, that is the reason why pectoralis minor is called as the key muscle of the axilla. Why pectoralis minor has to be called as the key muscle of axilla? key muscle of and important muscle of axilla is because pectoralis minor pectoralis minor is the one which divides the axillary artery into three parts so this is called as the first second and the third part now let us look at the branches of these uh, arteries of this artery the important thing is that the first part gives one branch the second part gives two branches third part gives three branches Okay, so let us discuss now. The first part, now how do you remember all of these branches guys? Remember it as 6, teens, love, 
songs and poems. Sixteens love songs and poems. Okay. Now, the first part gives one branch. Second part gives two branches. Third part gives three branches. Now, coming to the first part, S stands for superior thoracic artery. Superior thoracic artery. T stands for thoracoacromian artery. Thoracoacromian artery. And L stands for lateral thoracic artery. What is that? Lateral thoracic artery. Now, when it comes to songs and poems, S stands for subscapular artery. And A and P stands for anterior circumflex humeral and posterior circumflex humeral. Okay. Anterior circumflex humeral artery and posterior circumflex humeral artery. So, these are the important things which you need to know. Okay. The first part, this is the first part, this is the second part, right? And this is the third part of the axillary artery. 